You can't get rid of the stress, but there are probably things that you can do to make your life so that you can process the stress a little better. Going outside and getting sunshine might just be mostly placebo, just like we talked oh, about. Yeah, you know, you got to go do it. Ice in your joints or getting in the hot tub or the pool or the sauna or whatever. Who knows if that actually works, but it just makes you feel a little bit better. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick, and over there is Matt Reynolds. He is recuperating from the Kung Flu. And uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about stress because here's what I've noticed, man. We didn't do any show prep because, you know, we don't do show prep. Right. But all of my online clients, except for really two of them, are are struggling right now. Okay. And me personally, in my training, I've been struggling. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of detraining. I'm seeing a lot of misreps. Uh, I'm getting a lot of... Um, I'm getting a lot of messages from my, my folks that are, um, well, they're reaching out, man. And yep. uh, a lot of, I've got, uh, I got a, a few female clients who in, in a lot of ways, my female clients are my best clients. Um, those are very coachable. Yes. In your opinion, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, f- f- my female clients, I say, Hey, listen, I need you to do uh, four sets of four at this weight tomorrow. And they just do them. And the yeah, guys are like, why did you change it. to four fours instead of this? And I <laughs> yeah, thought that we yeah. might. And then I thought that, and then it's like, well, you know, I don't care what you thought, uh, but the, the ladies just do their stuff and they also communicate better. And uh, I had a couple of ladies that um, frankly broke down in tears after their workouts today. Mm-hmm. And I, and I talked to them on the phone and send them these videos and stuff. But, you know, my, my, my two really hard working ladies that I'm really proud of. It's 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 Tracy and Sonia. If you guys listen, I'm I'm super proud of you and you're hard working. Uh and my guys that are detraining, I mean, I, I get to watch all of these people and and I know I know that they're just under an enormous amount of stress. And sure. you, you would think that working from home, right? Get get getting to work from home, not having to commute. Uh, having your life simplified in the way that it's happened to everybody over these last couple of weeks because of this, because of this panic, you would think that that would uh, help the training, <laughs> but right. I'm not seeing that it's helping people's training. No, me neither. They're, they're just carrying around a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. They're worried about their loved ones. You know, I've got a client whose uh, whose spouse is is a little bit older and diabetic. I know they're really worried that you know if that if if uh, the spouse gets the gets any complications maybe yep. you know, he's a comp- he's, he's compromised maybe he couldn't make it you know uh got some clients that have a number of children you know uh, they don't you know a, a kid that was um had rsv when they're a child were on a respirator for a time and still got mm-hmm. a little bit of a compromise in their sure. uh, pulmonary system you know they're worried about these things sure and it's just it's just everybody's getting their ass kicked sure and uh, we've got a little bit of a, a bullhorn here, and we can broadcast to a number of people. And I want you to know you're probably getting your ass kicked, dear listener. And uh, so is everybody else. The training's probably harder. Feel, it doesn't feel good. It's probably harder than it has been in the past. Uh, making the gains is harder than it has been for you in the past, and uh, you ain't alone in that. Um, s- stress is stress. You're body can't tell where it's coming from or what the nature of it is, you know? That's right. We've talked about this a lot, you know, with people who um, deal with life stress. You know, you, we, obviously, we've never talked about what happens if there's like a, a massive a massive epidemic. We've never said that, but we, we often talk about, you know, well, you, you get in a fight with your spouse, you get a divorce, you, get, you, you lose your job, uh, you know, there's a tragedy with a family member. Like that stuff affects your training cr- incredibly. And right now, everybody is going through very, very high levels of stress. You think about really what it comes down to, if you look at that stress scale, I've talked to Pewter about this, is it's life change, right? When you have a massive life change, it's stressful, good or bad. Mm -hmm. You you buy a new house, 
you're excited about the house. I remember when I bought the house a year ago, super stressful. Well, how, whose life hasn't changed the last three weeks? Everybody's life is different. Yeah. And so there's a tremendous amount of stress. And like you said, your body doesn't really know the difference. So it's, it's dealing with all this non productive, non gym stress. And then you go and try to get your workouts in. Maybe you got a home gym. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're doing body weight stuff at home. Maybe you're flinging a kettlebell around and your body's like, uh, uh-uh, I don't like this because it's hurting and struggling 23 other hours a day outside the gym. Yeah. People are worried about what's going to happen. You know, when do they get back to work? Do they get back to work? Sure. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, uh, so anyway, that's happening to everybody, and that does not have a good effect on your training, and that's going to make training more difficult than it would be otherwise. Man. So I don't need to beat that anymore. But what what the heck do you do if yeah. that's the case for you? What do you do? And um, I don't want anybody to detrain, and I want them to still make improvement if they can, and I always try to do the minimum effective thing. And, and most of the time, if you're someone who's out of LP and – you're having these sort of problems that we're ta- describing here. I am finding that um, I can lengthen the, their cycle. They can go from mm-hmm. one week to two weeks. Um, and that, that makes each individual workout a little, sh- little less stressful, uh, but it lets them accrue more stress between PR attempts and they can still move, move on and, um, and they're doing enough work and I can keep the intensity up enough that they don't detrain. So, um, in general, that has been the thing that I've been doing for my people that are under a great deal of stress. And uh, that's, that seems to work. Yeah. You know, you, you said you, you've used that term detraining a couple times. Um, and I, I think you would agree with this. We've said this before on the podcast. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. Yep. And the reality is, is that most people right now today are getting a little bit worse. Yep. And so um, I just want to be clear with people it's actually okay to detrain a little bit it, what, what what's your tra- choice it, you, you don't most people don't have a choice no. right and so but the, what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to slow that detraining down yep and what's not okay is to do nothing right is to just go man i'm so depressed i'm just going to read all the news outlets and i'm going to be on twitter all the time and i'm just going to be like depressed yep and sit and sit around and do nothing and eat shit and that's not okay and so while some of you don't have access to the equipment you normally have access to, or maybe you do, and the stresses are just enough that the weight is just heavy, it's okay to take weight off of the bar a little bit at a time. But what's not okay is to not, not do anything. And so you don't have an excuse uh, to not do anything. Even if you're one of those people, I think Scott and I are going to do a, I think on Thursday, we'll do a Q&A about training from home and, and all of those sort of intricacies and for people that don't have equipment but even if you don't have equipment there are things you can do i know i've told this story before uh our our good friend father floater who by the way they are in complete total quarantine inside that seminary like they've shut the doors and locked them you can't get in or out at the seminary sounds awesome yeah it's awesome and so he's like day six nobody's sick right since Mm -hmm. they've locked the doors they're they're six days in. they've been in kind of general quarantine like most of the world but i mean they're you're not getting in or out nobody and so um he went on a mission trip to Venezuela. I don't know if you've heard of Venezuela, but it is not a healthy economic country. And he went there for three months, uh, about a year ago now, somewhere in that ballpark. And all he could do is body weight stuff. We did, you know, we did air squats and push ups, and he found a beam in a in a barn to do chin ups and pull ups on. And he did some sprints, and he lost 20, 30 pounds while he was there because there's no food in Venezuela. Uh, but he came back, and he we put him on an LP, and he set massive PRs across the board. He was in great shape. His work capacity was high. All of those things were there. He did what he could, right? There's, there's no barbells in Venezuela. There's no gyms. And uh, this is kind of the same thing right now. For a lot of you guys, you just you got to do what you got to do. Um, for me, man, when I've done active stuff, even stuff, you know, everybody knows I've been sick. Uh, just getting out and walking around my neighborhood outside, getting some fresh air, walking with my wife, get my heart rate going. I went out, worked in the yard for like three or four hours, uh, two days ago. It was beautiful outside. God, it felt good. The sun on my back. I mean, really you good. just stuff you don't think about normally I'm like, ah, yard work. It was a pleasure to do yard work the other day. Right. Sun was at my back. You know, it's just, so how are you guys handling it? Oh, we're fine. 
Uh, don't feel the stress at all? Uh, no, I won't. I won't say that. Um, I mean, you got you had kind of elderly parents, and right? Well, yeah. You know, I was and talking compromised. to mom, I was talking to mom the other day, and uh, I said things gonna get real bad, you know, economically. She's like, "Yeah, I do too." And uh, I said, "You ready to play in the garden and start canning again?" And she said, "I'll go out like I came in." And I said, "How's that?" She said, "Hungry and mad." <laughs> I was like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> well, you know, That's when funny. she was when she was. You know they were they yeah. were uh, desperately poor. Sure, when she was when she, when she was a kid, and uh, we 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 bought all this stuff came for the to do it again. Gardens. Mm -hmm. Look, this is my composter. Oh Just my bought gosh. a composter. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm, ready, I'm gonna drive up there and shit in that composter and drive back home <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> it would be like you. I'd be like, boy, I just can't get the uh, so it's a little fruity smelling in here. I can't figure right. out what's going on. It needs a little more dry. Like no, <laughs> it's in trouble. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I've done some Instagram lives where I've talked to people about what I think uh, the economic consequences of all this thing are going to be, and uh, I don't find any of that to be any fun. Um, but you know, we've, um, you know, over here we're kind of financial preppers, if nothing else, and uh, and I think if anybody's going to be okay, we will be. But it's still no fun. Um, everybody, everybody's really pretty healthy too, and I don't, I don't see us really having, um, well. While uh, somebody might get ill, I don't think it's going to put anybody in the ground uh, sure. that's close to us anyway. But it's it's no fun, you know. It's no no fun watching your community and your state and your country uh, do as poorly as it's doing right now. And um, so, you know, we're 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 getting some stress in those ways. But what are you going to do? Uh, like I said, I, I put myself among those that were detraining uh, when I when I open the show, you know, so I've been detraining. I th I think, Matt, I didn't go get tested like you. I didn't get as sick as you, but we're finding out now, like the National Health Service in in the UK said that they believe that about 40 to 50% of the people in the country had already had it, but were, uh, didn't have, th they did not need to be hospitalized. Yeah, they were uh, low, low symptom or asymptomatic. Yeah, uh, so. I felt like dog squeeze for about six weeks and was pretty sick for about a week uh it wasn't the flu it wasn't anything else i've ever had i i, I might have had it i don't know uh, but i i damn sure didn't feel very good for a while and uh detrained quite a bit and training has been um as, as you know if you've been if you've been pulling in the fives and now you got to go pull 335 and that's heavy that's zero mm. fun yep you're like, I'm going to have to struggle through all of this crap again to yep. get to 80% of where I was. You're like, yuck. You know, uh, that's really frustrating situation. But, you know, what are you going to do? Right. You, gotta, you know, you go, you go do your stuff anyway. Yeah, I've been in those situations before. I've talked about this where I, you know, there's been times in my life when I played golf or, or I used to be a basketball was my sport in high school. I loved basketball or well, whatever it is, right? I grew up a ping pong table, was, you know, good, good ping pong player. There, there's, it's far worse to get great or good at something and then not do it for a while and come back and be crappy again like you're a beginner right? than to start it for the first time and be a beginner because you just you don't have any expectations. There's something weird about picking up 315, a 315 deadlift, and be like, oh, man, this is heavy. Like, how could this possibly be heavy? This yeah. is 40% of my all-time PR. You yeah. Know? And you're just like, Ugh. You know, I've and, got like uh, 240 pounds more a run out that's just going to be actually heavier than this. Damn it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I've been feeling a little better. And as a result, the weights are just moving right, right up. And I pulled, you know, 360 or something like that with no belt. And it didn't feel heavy at all. But when I first got kind of got back on the horse, boy, it was all heavy. It was all sure. heavy and it was all bad. But um, I don't know. Do we want to talk about well, like the to economic about, let's, situation? Let's, let's make it about what? <laughs> the economic situation. Well, I don't <laughs> – here's the thing. I know that our listeners feel – I mean, the point of this podcast, they feel the stress. They feel – we don't. I don't know that we have to paint the bleak picture because I think most of them get it. I, hopefully, our listeners are a little, little, little higher on the IQ scale, probably a little more with it on, on knowing what's what's – factual and what's not except but for the ones the, that email me about some things well it happens sometimes but the question is for our listeners who are feeling this thing uh, you know i i've had several amas with our with our staff and our and our clients both 
where I just basically did a Zoom call and just like, hey, if you want to talk to me and ask me any questions about anything, about training, about the business, about anything, you can do it. And people are so people are so socially starved. They I think they just love yeah. to, man, I can talk to somebody. And so the question is for these people, uh, oh, and by the way, I have been surprised by the reaction of some people um, at how how scared they are. Mm-hmm. Man, I, we've had some staff that um, – that you know they work from home and and they do just fine. We have an online coaching business; it's going it's going just fine. Um, and and they're scared. I mean, they're just worried about everything. They're worried mm-hmm. about their, their families. You know, maybe not in the same city they're in, or um, just whatever it is. They're worried about family. They're worried about their in everything. And so, um, so the question is practically for our listeners who are at home struggling with this stuff: What do they do <laughs> to deal with this stress? What do they do to deal with the stress? What well, ain't a very good show if there's no practical, you know? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think there is anything practical. You know, everybody says, oh, uh, go exercise, go outside and walk, get, take some fresh air. Uh, spend, you know, I, yeah, do do all that stuff. All that stuff that people tell you to do it. But the truth of it is, it's a stressful damn time, you know? Well, it's not going to end the stress. I guess here's no, the point. No, it's not. You can't get rid of the stress. But there are probably things that you can do to make your life so that you can process the stress a little better. Like th- there are there are real moves you can make, and I think that's where some of that stuff comes in. And I think maybe some of that stuff, like going outside and getting sunshine, might just be mostly placebo. Just like we talk oh, about, yeah, you know, you got to go do it. You know, ice in your joints or getting in the hot tub or the pool or the sauna or whatever. Who knows if that actually works? But it just makes you feel a little bit better. And so yeah. I think part of that is. Is you know we we talked I talked uh, on the podcast Sunday about just like I think doing things like you you want to you want to have a sense of normalcy as much as you can in the midst of chaos right like it's sure. chaotic and we nobody can be normal but but if you eat relatively the same foods and you train at basically the same time and you wake up at the same time and you go to bed about the same time those are things that are in your control you can do those things right now you might be you know nervous and anxious and you might be reading the news outlets and, and all the things like, you know, when am I getting that check or what's going on or what's the bailout look like or how many people are getting laid off. Or, by the way, so maybe, I, I don't yeah, want Maybe you shouldn't read that. But. You know, well, maybe you shouldn't. Uh, but I think for some people, you need to allow yourself that little bit of time every day to be able to do that, but you can't do it all day. Right. All day is, that's a pervasive cancer in you. And so, right. um, you know, we've, we've talked before about the dichotomy between discipline and motivation and we've talked about you, white nickel discipline doesn't work long term. No. You've got to be motivated to do it. But I do think this is one of those times when there is still some reason to have some white knuckle discipline. Like, listen, I'm just like everybody else. I'm a workaholic. I love to work. You've talked about it before. I got this, you know, this Protestant work ethic thing going on. I don't really want to work right now. I don't want to break down videos. I don't want to program. I don't want to answer emails. I don't do anything. I just yeah. want, honestly, I just want to read Twitter and the news outlets and see what's going on. But there's some white knuckle discipline that occurs. I'm still getting up early. I'm still trying to maintain the same schedule. I'm doing my stuff early in the morning. And there's freedom in that for me because sure. then when it's over, I'm like, okay, I don't have that hanging over me anymore. That's not a stress in my life. And so I think for a lot of us, it's just a way to maintain some level of control in the middle of an extremely chaotic environment right now, which is what we're, what we're in. Yeah. If there's anything, you know, maintaining the made up word normalcy, um, you know, and, uh, keep, keeping those good habits and, you know, taking that walk or whatever, all those things, you know, you need to do them. But I, I, I just think, uh, I think everybody's just going to have to go through all those stages of grief because stuff yep. is fixing to be different. The old way is gone. There's a new way coming and we're just going to have to, uh, just grieve that old way and, and get used to what's in the, the new way, whatever that's going to be. And, um, and, um, you know, find a new way, of, a, a new way of being and move on. Good times. Do you think, do you think that there will be a time like, I certainly think that, and I think we talked about this on the podcast last week, that so, a lot of these changes really, if you look at it uh, for humanity are probably not bad, right? The more time at home, more, more cooking at home with your family, more time with your family, mm. uh, you know, less electronics, more reading books, more, like it's kind of a it's we've kind of reverted back to the olden days and and right now because life is so different it's very stressful the question is when that becomes normal 
Is it better? Is there it, certainly there are parts of it I think that are better? How many people are going to work from home and realize they don't ever have to go back to work again? There's no reason to work from an office. Right. How many people are going to train at their house and decide I don't need to go to a gym anymore? Like training at my house is way better, right? How many people spend too much time just wasting time on things who have now had more time at home to just read and get better at something? Um, I don't know how OGB is doing. Are, it's interesting. The academy at Barbell Logic is going strong, getting signed up because people are like, I'm, I'll learn right now. Hmm. I might not be able to train as hard, but I'm willing to learn. So I'm interested when that world becomes normal, how much of it changes in the future after they lift all these quarantines and the, the shelter in places, how many people go, you know, there's some parts of that life I don't, I don't want to leave behind. I, I kind of like to continue to work from home, spend more time with my family, read more books, train at my house. I, I hope there are some benefits that come out of this for sure. I think there, I think there certainly will be, but it's going to, a lot of people's lives are 100% aligned around the old way, and um, that's going to be gone. And I think there are a lot of them are going to flounder. I was, What's funny is that you you called the old way what has always been talked about as the new way. Now the new way is the old way, right? And the yeah, old old I, way, I think so, is back to normal. I mean, really, like that. You know, you've kind of you kind of live your life like it's the 1950s. And everybody else like, Scott, you're crazy. Now everybody's living their life like it's 1950s. Maybe. <laughs> so. Maybe. You know, a lot of people. I, 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 my home group, my home book group met last night on Zoom. Right. And uh, I, I love all those guys. They're all a bunch of good guys. And they're all working from home. And, and I was thinking, you know, I don't know how many millions of people across the United States are, work, quote, unquote, working from home. And... You know, at some point, real materials have to be moved around in the real world. Like, things have to actually happen in the concrete somehow. And, uh, man, oh, man, there's going to be a lot of jobs that just, you know, like you said, a lot of people are going to say, gosh, I don't have to go in. You know, why why do I, why am I expected to go in when I've done it from home? There's going to be a lot of employers are like, you know what? The shit still went out the door and uh, 80% of this office staff's out of here. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it, there's going to be an enormous reshuffling. Uh, sure. I think a third of businesses under with under 50 employees won't won't be here in May next year. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be commercial. Astounding. What's going to happen to commercial real estate? Oh, you know, boof. Uh, it, it's screwed in a million ways. It's sure. screwed in a million ways. You know, uh, their their Class B renters can't pay the rent. So they're going to be in a cash flow crunch, and then uh, and then it's all the wrong space. You know, it's all office and cubicles, and a lot of those office people right. are never coming back. And right. so, so it's right. all misallocated. Right. So industrial space is hot, but the office space are maybe dead. maybe it's hot. It's got a better shot, I think, than um, sure than but malls than office. Yeah, malls. And, I was thinking about that the other day. We drove. I don't know if you guys have driven around Tulsa. Any we we've driven around a couple times in Springfield. Just stayed in the car just to kind of see what it's like. We drove down to the really like the retail center of Springfield, like big mm-hmm. mall and all the restaurants. It's dead. It's like you know what it's like. It's like Christmas morning. It's like right. driving around on Christmas at ten a.m. when everything's closed, but the Chinese restaurants. So I'll tell you what. I tell you this that it's crazy. Nobody's in the drive-throughs. Yeah. The drive-throughs are all open. Nobody's in them. So weird. So weird. So weird. Oh baby, it's coming. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't want to do this show to make everybody more stressed, <laughs> no, <laughs> but let's, let's make them uh, less stressed, but you know, think things are stressful. And uh, I think when you train, you need to acknowledge it and be, be kind to yourself, um, make some programming changes to, uh, make room for that stress. You know, I haven't gotten any emails about those two MED shows that I did, which either means I explained it perfectly and there are no questions or we're so goddamn confusing that nobody knows what I was talking about. <laughs> Um, but you can listen to that and hear about how we talk about, you know, if somebody has too much stress and they're not able to recover, you know, some of the things that you might do with the training to, to make, to make room for more, for more stress in the training regimen, you know, that's the kind of stuff you need to do. Lengthening, lengthening the cycle, uh, finding variants that are less stressful, but let you put weight on the bar, all all those kinds of things are what you got to be doing. And, uh, don't kick the can. Meaning, if you think there's going to be, you're going to have trouble uh, making this payment or that payment in the future, or that you know you see potential troubles on the horizon, don't wait till they crush you. Uh, yep. Let's let's take some action. Let's be people of action. 
and do what we can about those things now. If that means, uh, um, even though you're under lockdown, selling the new Xbox and everything that you can and, uh, selling that car that you got the note on and trying to, you know, shuck off some of that debt, then, you know, do it. Um, even if we can't fix all the problems, taking action directed towards fixing the problems sure seems to make me feel better. Uh, yep. You know, it gives us some agency. It makes us feel like we have some control and, and, you know, and you can, and you can shore up your position a little bit. So if you see trouble coming, you know, don't just sit on your ass and wait for it to wash over you like a tidal wave, do something about it and see if you can get ahead of it. Um, yeah. It, remi- it reminds me, you tell them that it reminds me of like when Katrina hit, you know, mm. Katrina's coming and everybody knows it's coming and the whole world tells New Orleans like hey time time for action right time to get out time to move time to and the number of people who just sat there and said nah I'm just gonna let it wash over me literally wash and that's what and that's literally what they did yeah and uh this is really kind of the same thing it's it's a it's like a tidal wave and we can kind of see what's coming uh, by the way I almost said this that's I don't want you to this could send you off on a on a Massive tangent, which I don't really want to do, but I I read you know the because of the stimulus that's coming in, the stock markets rebounded a little bit, and I read an article. I think it was in from the Wall Street Journal. It might have been New York Times. I can't remember. Cause I'm reading a bunch of stuff right now, but it said we're we're out of the bear market and back into bull market. I was like, does it feel like a bull market? Three and a half million people out of out of work in just in the United States, and that's stupid. And I understand they're just using the metrics, oh, but I mean, it's, come on, it's dude. Does it, it's just how stuff. much is it? Have you ever felt this and been like, yeah, this feels like a bull market. Feels like, yep, feels feels good. That's crazy. D- do you want to talk about the, this? I don't know. I don't want to scare people. You know, I just, but. I, I mean, don't think, I don't know. Everybody's grown up. You know, I've been through a couple of these. You've been through a couple of these. September yep. 2001. You remember that? I, I do. And, uh, and I, I think the economy 09. is in pre- the economy. I want to say the economy, but I don't think there's any such thing as the economy. It's right. just something that people throw around. Uh, there wasn't a lot of debt out there. Interest rates seem to be kind of where they ought to have been, a little healthier place than they are now. And I think the underpinnings of you know business activity were a little healthier at that time. But it was a big shock. You know, They cl- shut down all the air travel for a time, shut the stock market down for a time. I remember we paid $11 for diesel fuel for a couple of days. Wow. Right around that time. And, and uh, uh, a lot of things changed. You know, We did a lot of deliveries back then. And you used to be able to just run in somebody's office and throw a delivery on their desk and they'd sign and you just walk out. Well, then everybody had security and you had to get a badge. You had to sign in and like triple the amount of time it took us to do everything. Sure. Um, and that was in September of 2001. It was September 11th. I don't know if you guys know that date. It's true. And then the stock market bottomed out actually in March of 2002. So it right. took a number of months for that all to roll Seven out. Months, mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, then went then in two thousand eight, uh, Bear Stearns and Shearson Lehman Brothers went away, yep. and uh, there was there were some bank banking crises, lots of mortgage debt and uh, crazy leveraging and you know yeah. bad, bad bad economic underpinnings yeah. bad economic yeah. underpinnings and it was a big shock in two thousand in two thousand eight in September, the stock market continued to leg down until March. Here we go again. Of 2009, and the S&P 500 bellied out at 57% down. Yep. So those are two very different crises for two different, very different reasons. I think this one has both conditions. It's a social shock, uh, whereas businesses were shut down for a couple of days or in the airline industry maybe a little longer than that. In 2001, businesses have been shut down effectively for much, much longer than that so far. And uh, the the business conditions are far worse. There's more debt in the system than there was at the time, and wages are lower than they were then. And the Federal Reserve Bank doesn't have any, as many arrows in its quiver. It shot a bunch of those arrows in 2008, sure. 2009, and never clawed them back. So yeah. uh, they have fewer tools in their toolbox than they did at that time. So I expect that this stock market, which isn't the whole thing, that isn't, that isn't the measure of well human well being in sure. the world, but it's like cholesterol. I I think it's going it, to it alone doesn't tell you what's going it, on, it, but it's it a pretty good measure of what's coming or but it does mean something. But I think it's going to leg down for months and months. I think October, November, or something like that. We'll start to Gosh, see. I hope you're wrong. We'll start to see. You may be right. 
I, 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 I don't do see think how, it will, I don't, I think it'll I don't come back I faster. <laughs> I think it, I think it'll come back faster than those times because I think it'll be, you don't think so? No. Well, here's why I say that. I, I'm not saying it'll, I'm not saying that the, the downward spiral won't take a very, a very long time, but I, I don't think that the climb back will take as long as the spiral did. And I think it's part of that is because in, you talk about there's been this massive change to everybody's life that's occurred where they've been out of jobs. They're, everybody's just at home. Like whether, even if they're, even if they're working, like everything's different. But I think that quickly for most people, it'll go back to normal. And as it goes back to normal, I think the, the economy will bounce back. Now, how many people don't get to go back to normal because the hotels are shut down forever. Some of them, the restaurants are shut down forever. Like the service industry people like that, you know, that's, that's, you know, they're never, they're not going to come back. They're going to have to get a different job in a different industry and it's going to take some time. But, um, yeah, and where are those jobs going to be? There will be no growth industry. Right, right. Sure. No, I, I, it's going to continue to leg down. So if the SP went down 57% under a certain set of conditions in 2008, 2009, uh, I think the underlying conditions are worse. There's a trillion and a half of student loan debt, a, bill, a trillion in credit card, like three in automobile. Crazy about nine and a half to 10 in, in mortgage. I was looking this stuff up the other day and wages are lower. I, I you know, if 2008 put the S and P down 57%, I, I think that this could be more probably ought to be, but again, that's not the whole measure of human flourishing, you know? Sure. So, uh, I don't well, know. And so, well, and so again, to not depress everybody, I think that we've talked a lot about on this show, especially in the early years, about the things that bring us value. And I think that never has there been a more important time to recognize what those things are, right? It makes it makes things like your health and your family um, and whatever those things are that bring you value, your training mm-hmm. and your education, like your own personal uh, reading for, for education. It makes those things far more important. Whatever those things are that bring you value, you really got to push in on those things right now because – Everything else nuts, you know. Yeah. I think a lot of us, you know, even even people who aren't, you know, they don't they don't necessarily have those vices, like they don't they don't smoke or drink or do drugs or whatever. But like, how many times do we use vices? Where we're just like, you know, I just we go to a restaurant to eat to eat dinner because it's kind of a thing that gives us a little dopamine hit, get some food, mm-hmm. go out, you know. And does it really bring me value? No, it doesn't. It doesn't bring me value. I have way more value having dinner with my family at my at the table, you know. You're right. And uh, so, so really kind of pushing in on those things has been important for us over the last few weeks, especially coming out of the sickness, you know, like I, I got it so early. That, the sickness. Uh, the sickness. Yeah. I joked with Rachel. I was like, man, if this was any of the other stuff, you know, this is the bubonic plague. I'm dead already. <laughs> and so, it's, uh, and I think I said this, you know, Rachel got it too, um, but she was really asymptomatic the entire time. And as of, I think about five days ago, the health department has officially released us. So now I'm immune. She's frankly in much better health than you. She much, well, much, I mean, much obviously she is. Much, <laughs> so much. There's really no surprise. So I get it, and I get double pneumonia and go to the hospital for a couple of days. Rachel gets it, and she's like, yeah, I'm good. Coffee tastes weird. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, t- taste buds aren't so good. So, uh, yeah, man, push into the stuff. Push into the stuff that matters, that brings you value. Family and training and kids and uh, faith and education and those things that to bring you value. That's the stuff to push in for right now. It's the stuff that yeah, brings... I think so. Hey, we've talked a lot. Happiness is fleeting, right? Happiness is cheap and doesn't last. And in times like this, it's hard to be happy, but it's not hard to be content or joyful. Uh, I'm very thankful for the the job I have and the people I get to work with and the family I've got. And those things are incredible. I'm counting my blessings right now. And so we can do that in the midst of the storm and uh, might be the best thing for us, make us feel better. Yeah, so be patient with yourself uh, if you've seen those numbers go down. By golly, that's why, guys, that's why the stress is uh, un, uh, unavoidable, inescapable. There's another Barbell Logic podcast. Uh, thanks for coming and letting us bum you all out. If you have any questions, you can send them to questions at barbell-logic.com. And uh, you know what? They need to go listen to my other, other show, the Music and Ideas podcast. The Music and Ideas podcast? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, it's it's a lot like the uh, the Christmas show I've been doing. I've got oh, uh, oh, I do right, that with right, uh, right. Michelle Hawkins, who I yelled at about the Beatles the other day because I hate the Beatles. 
Oh, interesting. And uh, yeah, you can go listen to that one. iTunes has got us buried. You cannot even find it there. Right. Yes. Uh, you got in too know. late. We've talked about this before. We got lucky here at Barbara Logic. Yeah. We got in right on the cusp. Yeah, so I think. Uh, those yeah, I think we're doing some interesting stuff there that really nobody else is doing, and uh, I think it'll. I think it's it's gonna. It actually it is a good show. It'll be all right, but uh, it's just gonna take a little while. It's just gonna take there a little while. But uh, send those questions to questions at barbell-logic.com, and we will answer them on uh, one of our Thursday shows. And if you need some help with that programming or those home workouts or whatever while you're there stuck there at the house, you can email experience at barbell-logic.com and you get a little consultation. We'll talk about your situation, uh, give, you some, uh, give you some programming advice and look at your form and uh, see if we can get you moving there while you're in the midst of uh, the lockdown. Did you see the sweet deal we're running right now in online coaching for the Mm-mm. so if you sign up for online coaching right now and use discount code home gym, we will buy you a two hundred dollar gift card to your equipment manufacturer of choice. And that would even include if you want to get your equipment from Amazon or some other one that's not actually manufactured, but Rogue Fitness, Rep, Fringe, Titan, any of those, Elite FTS. You, you tell us where you want your gift card. We'll get you a gift card and facilitate getting those workouts done at home. And uh, it's a pretty sweet gig. Basically makes your first month of online coaching free. It's a pretty good deal. Outstanding. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Wash your damn hands. Huh? I've been doing it a lot. Yeah. And everybody's you even wash your hands even after you pee? I wash them uh, before I pee. <laughs> but everybody stay safe and healthy out there. And we will talk to you on Thursday. <laughs>